This video describes lesson number two, crazy cracking. This continues on with the topics discussed in fractional distillation and understands how we can turn larger, unuseful molecules into smaller, more useful ones. The first objective is to suggest why it is important to carry out the cracking process, to describe the conditions necessary for a cracking reaction, and to explain using diagrams how long chain molecules are converted into smaller ones. This diagram shows a cracking reaction. The important thing for things for you to note at this point is how the diagram is set out. Firstly, it's drawn using a ruler so that all the lines are straight. It's very important when drawing scientific diagrams that each of the bits of equipment are labelled. However, note that the clamp stand is not drawn, nor is a Bunsen burner. Instead, we use an arrow and rack heat underneath to show how we heat the catalyst, which is broken porcelain, rather than just the mineral oil. We've also included the trough and how we've collected the gas. This is a demonstration of the cracking reaction. Inside the boiling tube, we have mineral wool soaked in paraffin oil. For this reaction, we require a catalyst. In this case, it is porcelain or pottery, and it is the silica in the pottery which provides the catalyst for this reaction. A simple definition of a catalyst is that, it's, is that it acts as a surface for the reaction to happen on, increasing the rate of reaction. You'll study catalysts in more detail in C3. Connected to the boiling tube, we then have a delivery tube, which is underneath some water. And inside the water, we have some test tubes, and we're going to collect the product. Now, when I start heating this reaction, I will only heat the mineral wall for about one second out of every ten that I heat the catalyst. We want the reaction to happen on the catalyst itself. The delivery tube has started to give out some gas, which we'll collect in the, in the test tubes. The function of a cracking reaction is to break long chain hydrocarbons into a smaller, shorter chain alkane molecule and a shorter alkene molecule. Alkane molecules contain only single covalent bonds and are described as saturated. Alkene molecules contain a double bond and are described as unsaturated. By converting long chain hydrocarbons into shorter chain alkenes, we can use these for many chemical manufacturing processes, produce molecules that can then go on to be used in drugs or to produce polymers and plastics. Once you've removed the equipment from the water, it's important to keep heating. This is because the pressure inside the boiling tube is different to atmospheric pressure and is now far less. As the heat inside the boiling tube is increased, the pressure has forced the air out of the tube. If we were to leave it in the water, this pressure would draw the water back into the tube and into the boiling tube where it would crack. This is called suck back and should be avoided at all costs. Now that we've completed our cattle cracking reaction, we need to test for the products. Here we have two gas vials that we've collected. First, let's test for the alkene molecule. The alkene molecule contains a double bond. The way we test for double bonds is that we add to the, to the gas bromine water. Bromine water is normally a yellow colour. The test for unsaturated double bonds is that the solution will turn clear. There the solution is turned clear and we have a positive test for an unsaturated double bond. So we've been successful and made alkene. Our second product will be an alkane molecule. We expect alkane molecules to be able to easily combust, such as methane or butane in your hands. To test to see if we have made this molecule, we're going to ignite it. There we go. A small but simple combustion to show that we have, in fact, produced an alkene molecule.
So to finally explain the cracking process. Cracking is a process that converts large alkane molecules into smaller alkane and alkene molecules. This makes useful alkene molecules that can then be used to make polymers. If this is an example of a long chain hydrocarbon that we wish to break, for example in our paraffin oil, when we undergo the cracking process we create a shorter alkane molecule. Both of these are alkane molecules. The thing that they have in common is that both of them only contain single covalent bonds. The other product we get out is an alkene molecule. This contains at least one double bond. Any alkane molecules we describe as saturated. Alkene molecules, because of the double bond, we can describe as unsaturated. And it is by attacking this double bond that we can do the interesting chemistry that will then provide us with useful um, polymers and plastics. The final part of this topic is to discuss the environmental implications. There can be environmental problems associated with the exploitation of crude oil. If oil sticks um, result, this can cause intense damage to wildlife and to beaches. That can include damage to birds' feathers and to fish. If this does happen, it is incredibly difficult to remove and to clean. Detergents can be used in order to clean up oil slicks and the consequent damage to wildlife. However, prevention is far better than trying to cure. There are political problems also associated with the exploitation of crude oil. The UK depends on oil and gas from politically unstable countries and future supply is a real issue for our economy. This brings us to the end of cracking. Hopefully you can now suggest why it is important to carry out the cracking process in order to obtain more useful molecules, to describe the conditions necessary for cracking reactions including the equipment and the catalyst, and to explain using diagrams how long chain molecules can be converted into smaller ones.